Hello everyone and welcome to November's first episode of Tomorrow News. Sadly, Crew 3 has been pushed back by a couple days to November 3rd, so we don't have that to cover, but we do have some Starbase action, the UAE are looking at human space flight, and then I'll be wrapping it up with some space traffic. So stay tuned as this is your episode of Tomorrow News, which is for the week of November 1st, 2021. I mentioned in the headlines how Crew 3 is yet to fly, that being due to weather over the Atlantic Ocean, but we can still have a look at some lovely photos that have been published by SpaceX. Over the past week, Dragon Endurance has arrived at the hangar at Historic Launch Complex 39A. It has been mated to Falcon Booster B1067, which previously carried CRS-22 to the ISS. The vehicle has been rolled out of the hangar. It has gone vertical on the pad and on the 28th, a static fire occurred to ensure all nine Merlin 1D engines were working in perfect order. A dry dress rehearsal has taken place, which covers everything that will happen on launch day, without the actual launch itself occurring, ensuring that the ground support team and most importantly the crew of Raja Chari, Thomas Marshman, Kayla Barron and Matthias Mora all know exactly what they're doing come launch day. At a press conference held during the 72nd International Astronautical Congress, Roscosmos' Director General Dmitry Rogozin said that he no longer has any reservations with flying cosmonauts on Crew Dragon. Quote, in our view, SpaceX has already acquired enough experience for us to be able to put our cosmonauts on Crew Dragon. This is a significant step forward with NASA's wish to do some seat swapping on Soyuz as they want to fly cosmonauts on Dragon as a part of the commercial crew program, which would then see more Americans flying on the Soyuz. The earliest we could possibly see a cosmonaut fly on Dragon would be the Crew 5 mission near the end of next year, which is similar for NASA with the Soyuz as they did not acquire a seat for MS-21. So the nearest date they could fly another astronaut on Soyuz would be near the end of next year as well. Something else announced at the Congress was that the United Arab Emirates have selected SpaceX to launch their MBZ Sat satellite in the second half of 2023 on a Falcon 9. It's time to move down to Starbase where Starship S-21's nose cone has been spotted being rolled out of the production tent and placed alongside a barrel section which is equally covered in Starbrick thermal protection tiles. The thrust perk for Super Heavy Booster 9 has arrived at the production facility with this new upgraded version being able to house 13 vicious raptors compared to previous iterations which are only able to house 9. Frank and Crane, more officially known as LR11350, has lowered its boom for what is looking like the last time. It's sad to see such an icon leave, after all for a while it was the tallest thing for miles in Boca Chica but never fear because a new crane is here. The new parts arrived at Starbase on Friday being hauled in by truck. Here you can see parts of the crawler arriving and they were assembled together very quickly. And I'll be honest, that's a pretty good looking start to a crane. The last substantial piece of news to come out of Starbase this week is the first movement of the Mechazilla chopsticks with them spreading open in the early hours of the morning. The UAE is one of the least experienced nations with the human spaceflight game, with only four astronauts currently within their program, and only one of them, Hazar al-Mansouri, has actually been to space. That could all change in the near future though, as through 2020 with Dragon coming online and Boeing Starliner hopefully coming online within the near future, there is now more than one way to get to space. The Mohammed bin Rashid Space Center is currently in talks with both NASA and Roscosmos for future flight opportunities, and they have also said that they won't shy away from commercial opportunities too, as long as the deal is long term. Interest has also been expressed with the cooperation with the Artemis program, sending an Emirati citizen or citizens beyond low Earth orbit. Speaking of orbit, let's look at some space traffic. Launching at 0219 UTC on October 26th, this H2A202 lifted off from the Yoshinobu launch complex in Tanegashima, Japan, carrying the QZS-1R geographic positioning satellite to a quasi-zenith orbit. This launch also marked the 100th launch attempt of the year, although it was only the 97th successful flight. 0620 UTC at the Zhiquan Space Launch Complex in China on October 19th marked the launch time of this Kuaozai 1A from XPACE, with the payload adding to the growing high-definition video remote sensing satellite constellation. Launching at exactly midnight on October 28th, this Soyuz 2.1A with Progress MS-18 on top lifted off from Launch Complex 316 at the Baikonur Cosmodrome in Kazakhstan, headed for the International Space Station. 
not opting for the classic saw you speed run this time around the vehicle docked to the station at 0131 UTC on October 30th specifically the aft port of the Zvezda module delivering food water and other supplies to the astronauts currently living on the ISS Coming up over the next seven days, we've got the launch of Crew 3 if it stays on schedule, another flight attempt from Astra, and the flight of an Epsilon. Just before we say goodbye this week, let's thank the citizens of tomorrow. They support the show every month through the YouTube membership program. And if you would like to join the Escape Velocity Orbital Suborbital or Ground Support ranks, then head on over to youtube.com forward slash tmro forward slash join, or you can just hit the little blue join button that is next to the subscribe button. If the subscribe button is still red, I'd recommend you click it so it turns grey. Also, I'd recommend that you hit the notification bell so you don't miss the next live show, which is this Friday night PDT, technically 0, 0100 UTC on the 6th, or next week's episode of the news. Also, a sneaky convenience for you if you're watching in Europe. Our clocks have gone back for daylight saving, but in the US they haven't yet. They're still on DST for another week, so the live show is actually an hour earlier for us if you feel like staying up late and watching it. But for now, thank you for watching. Hopefully we'll see you at the live show, and goodbye.